Yo guys, what is up? We are back, man, with another video. This time we're talking about the Falcons versus Saints. Last week we had a bye week. This week we are here, we are at home, and what a great game this was for us. It could have been a lot better, it could have been crazy. I would love to finally see a blowout against the Saints, but it did not happen. They got a blowout against us and in the years past, you know what I'm saying? With the whole police and stuff, you know, shout out to ALS and all that stuff. They was at the game, you know, respecting them and stuff like that. Even though we are rivals, they are still people, so good stuff to that. When it comes to that, you know, helping everybody out and stuff like that. Anyway, the Falcons have won this game 24 to 15. Shout out to everybody. But before I get into straight to the game, shout out to this experience. You know, they celebrated the 50 years of hip hop, so literally almost every Atlanta rapper was out there. Shout out to my Uncle Pete. If y'all don't know who it is, if you know, you know. Shout out to Uncle Pete. It was a Atlanta rapper, man. Good stuff, man. Um, everybody was performers by T.I. Even though he messed up the mic, I don't know what the heck was going on with that. He was supposed to come out with the intro. Quavo, Young Jeezy. Um, who was... Um, dang, it was a whole bunch of people. I feel like your Bone Crusher had literally the best performance. Yo, the dude sounds better than he did back then. Yo, Bone Crusher. Yo. That was the best one the whole time. And Ludacris came in number second. He was coming out from the ceiling. Good stuff, good environment. And then shout out to the Falcons fans, including myself, for showing up this game. The whole stadium was not over, you know, overran by the Saints fans. It was mainly us, and it was just a little bit of them this time. Um, obviously, you know, when we play against them, they made the game more entertaining because they'd be talking the most trash. It was some in front of us, some in the back of us. They was everywhere. But we made sure this city was taken over by, you know what I'm saying? We, we made sure that we held down our city. With Young Jeezy, all of them, everybody, 2 Chain, all of the, everybody was in the building, man. It was, it felt really good that we won this game after doing all of that. And if y'all saw that picture I had posted on my community page, maybe I put a uh, part of the thumbnail. Yo, the fact that it was, hold on, let me, let me make sure what the heck it had said, man. I cannot believe that, bro. They said, rise up, drown out that noise. Yo, I was like, yo, as a person that, yo, I know sometimes Amigos say they, they songs, they be like, Trap out look like it got hurt by Hurricane Katrina, you know what I'm saying? Like, or uh, Katrina, Coffee, but like, I don't know. I know they be making jokes about it, but I've never seen, I don't, that's like an orchestrated thing. I don't know if the team did that or not, but it was a big flag coming down from the ceiling. So that had to be the team. I never thought the team would ever do that. Like I said, I don't know if y'all can see it, but it's a... Drown out that noise. I was like, yo, no way they just went that far, man. But anyway, let's get into the game, bro. First off, y'all know I like to talk about the other team first. But only person in this game from the other team that really did something was that man, Chris Olave. Alvin Kamara, I think he's from here, if I'm not mistaken. Y'all know I like to, um, you know, do my research on folks. Yes, he's from Atlanta, Georgia. He's the same age as me. I'm actually ordering this man by six months, no, four months. Or something like that. But anyway, good stuff, man. So, Alvin Kamara, usually, it took him years to even score a test on us. He did not score a test on this game. I don't believe. Did he get a receiving one? No, Alvin Kamara did not score a test now. I believe he only has maybe one or two games in his career against us that he scored a touchdown. And I believe Derek Carr, in his career, has never beat the Falcons, if I'm not mistaken, because he played for the Raiders. And I don't remember the Raiders ever beating us. With him as quarterback. I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'm tripping. I don't know. But I don't remember that man doing that. But anyway, um, Chris Olave was the number one person destroying us this game on the Saints. Like I said, out of everybody, that is the only dude that I'm giving credit to this entire game on the Saints as far as the offense. Other than that, Taysom Hill, this was the best game. This was the best game the Falcons have ever played Taysom Hill since this man has been in the league. Taysom Hill is usually that you know that guy that just completely destroys us. This man, Taysom Hill, got freaking shut down. Got shut down. He made a little moves, but usually Taysom Hill single handedly destroys ever since this man has Taysom Hill. I don't even remember us ever like really beating this man if he has been there on the field. So the fact that we held Taysom Hill, even though he had two receptions, fifty five yards. He had a nice, he freaking mossed the heck out of, I believe, was that D. Alford or Mike Hughes? I think it was D. Alford. He mossed the heck out of him. Think about it, you get mossed by a quarterback, that's crazy. But even though I know he's a skill, you know, they call him a Swiss Army Knife. Derek Carr, uh, he had two carries for seven yards. But Taysom Hill, seven carries, 26 yards. Taysom Hill, two receptions, 55 yards. And they had this man playing kick return, even though he didn't get a chance to return no kicks. 
But this man takes some heels, dog. I want to see how tall this man takes some heels is. And we're going to get straight to stuff out man. Enough of talking about these these inks, you know what I'm saying? But let's see. How, how tall is this man? This man, I didn't even know he was 33 years old. They ain't even trying to show this man height, bro. How tall is this dude? He's 6'2". Why you only went? Yo, that man look huge. Hold on. How much the man weigh? Bro, we wear the same. He only went in taller than me. That man look huge. Yo, I guess if I got the pads on, that's how I'm going to look out there, bro. That's crazy. But anyway, man. Um... <laughs> Let's go ahead and get into it. But, yeah, as far as far as them, Taysom Hill, we shut him down. But Chris Olave, it was some stupid play, bro. I believe it was third down. It was Chris Olave in the slot. And they had Bud Dupree. I guess he was playing Matt Zone, manned up on him. And they left the dude wide open on the third and long. That was the dumbest thing I've ever seen in my life. Why the heck are you going to use a linebacker, Bud Dupree, even though I don't know if he's more of a rusher guy or a pass coverage guy. Against their best rod receiver, one of the fastest dudes on a team, leave him wide open in the slot and just completely destroy us the entire game. And then they're gonna put like Mike Hughes, who has not been good for us at all. Uh, I don't think we should have never even got that man. In my opinion, I feel like D. Alford is better than him. Obviously, AJ Terrell, Jeff Okuda is better than this man. He should have never been lined up on this man to begin with. In my humble opinion. That dude should never been on the team. I told you we should sign my boy Cameron Sutton that I went to school with. But you see he's doing good over there with the Lions. Mike Hughes should have never been on the team. And I'm going to leave it at that. I know we won the game, but that was dumb freaking coaching on that part. Never, ever, ever, ever should Mike Hughes be lined up on Chris Alawi. So, anyway, let's get to our team on the offense, man. Um, well, yeah, let's get to offense. Desmond Ritter. It was great to see Desmond Ritter back, man. I like him. I like this murder. Even though this game, he was one touchdown, two interceptions. I feel like he, though, I, I know y'all going to be like, yo, what the heck are you talking about? The best, well, I ain't going to say the best thing I've seen, but one of the main things I've seen from this game. He trusted his first instinct, and that made me so happy. And guess what? He did not, I don't think he got set this game. I don't believe he even got set. He got out of the pocket, and he ran. He didn't be like, oh, shoot. Wait till the last minute and then take off. He ran. He literally ran um, seven carries. He ran the ball seven times for 30 yards. Average 4.3 yards a carry. That is amazing. Yo, shout out to Desmond Ritter. I seen his progress. And also, he did not take, like, just sit there and just take a sack. He threw the ball away. When I seen that man throw the ball away, that made me roll. like, yo, this man been in the room. I don't, I don't ever remember seeing this man ever throw the ball away. So the fact that he threw the ball away, and the fact that he basically extended plays the way that he should be extending plays. I told you, I feel like this man is very Mahomes ex, Mahomes esque, but he hasn't reached to that point yet. But this man right here, Desmond Ritter, even though the stat she doesn't look too good for him, thirteen for twenty one, hundred sixty eight with t- one touchdown, two interceptions, he cleaned up some stuff today, man. This is a better Desmond Ritter than. We got from the start. And if y'all didn't know, when they showed that video package, the Falcons touchdown so far before the bye week last week, Desmond Ritter is the guy that scored most of our touchdowns this season. Whether it was passing, whether it was rushing, he is that guy. You know what I'm saying? He, he's the guy. Yeah, the guy. So, um, even though I, obviously I like Taylor Honeke and stuff like that too, but I'm glad Desmond Ritter is a starter. I'm glad he needed that sit down to come back and do what he needed to do. But anyway, this game. Drake London, five receptions, 91 uh, yards, average 18.2 yards a catch. Some of them catches, man, it made me nervous. I ain't going to lie, but he was zipping it up in there. And B. John Robinson, um, he had the three receptions, 32 yards. Kyle Pitts, two, 22, average 11 yards. I still wish we would, excuse me, my bad, utilize Kyle Pitts a lot more. But I don't know what that's about, man. I have no idea what it's about. A first-round draft pick tight end. They don't know what the heck they're doing. They don't know how to utilize them. I don't know if the rumors were true. Like a couple of weeks ago, he was asking for a trade. But I'm telling y'all, man, if they utilize Kyle Pitts to his full potential, bro, I don't know why they're making this man like a blocking tight end. He would be all right. And I know people are like, oh, well, it's a quarterback and stuff. No. If everybody done played football, y'all know the coaches have plays designed to certain people. And I feel like that messes up young quarterbacks because – they don't understand how to read the defense and, and go to their progression. If they be like, oh, shoot, the coach called this play for that person. Oh, he's covered. I don't know what to do. Like, they just freeze like a deer in headlights. Instead of actually like, okay, that was the first read. That, that's, what, that's what they should explain to these players. 
If the play is not for somebody, that should be your first read. You know, imagine it's the red route. That's that's the first read. If that dude is not open, then you scan the field and do it. Don't just be like, oh shoot, the play is over. Let me run around like an idiot and throw the ball away. That's what I'm saying. So Arthur Smith, he's supposed to be this offensive guru. He should be telling his quarterback that and not making him scared. Like, why did you do that? You know what I'm saying? Let the man be a quarterback. Let him learn. Let him. I see they they let him audible and stuff like that. That's cool and all that other stuff. But come on, man. Um, but anyway, the Tyler Algier had 10, 10 carries, 64 yards, average 6.4 yards a, a carry. B. John Robinson, 16 carries, 91 yards, one touchdown. They say he averaged the most yards in, of a scrimmage out of any rookies this year, which is crazy because there was a time when we wasn't really utilizing that man. Even though in the beginning, I feel like we was, but then we stopped for a while. But I will say this. This is the person that I feel that really made this game personal, and I love it, and he is a true Falcon, and I'm so glad he's on his team. It goes down to Cordero Patterson. The energy that he gave the stadium today was everything, man. Cordero Patterson, CP, my boy. If there was a jersey that I want, it's definitely Cordero Patterson. I've been liking Cordero Patterson since he was on the Vikings. And I feel like he's truly a Falcon. And I feel like, I believe he said that he wants to retire as a Falcon. This dude is that dude, man. The energy, when he ran the ball, I felt like he was like, the the extra intention and excitement that he had after he run the ball, like, it literally got everybody on their seat. Like, we was all fired up. And I feel like, I honestly feel like the extra intensity was toward the coach. I feel like he like, man, let me get out here and run this dang ball. That's how I felt. It was like, man, they thinking I'm old. They thinking I can't do nothing. They, they ain't trying to sign me for another year. Give me the ball and I'm going to show you what's up. Because I think he got that first down on third down. And he was just going crazy. He was like, man, let's go. Like, the, the play was bent over. Like, he was the only one out there. Man, he was rolling up the crowd. Man, I'm talking about I felt it from my seat. You know what I'm saying? 200 up, I ain't going to tell you what the road with it, but it, you know what I'm saying, all up in that thing, and I'm like, oh, shoot, like, yo, this man is, I don't know, it, I, I never, like, that the energy, you know, he had to say electricity in the air, when he did that, I freaking, you know, I say wrestling, I, I, I freaking popped up for him, I was like, man, let's go, man, let's go, CP, like, I was waiting for this man to get the ball, speaking of that, CP, when he did all of that, they took the man out, and then, when Desmond Ritter threw that pick, it should have never happened. We should never even got that predicament. They should have went to the red zone. They should have kept feeding the ball to CP. He would have ran in and we scored a touchdown. That's all I say. If this man is hyped up like that, he has that intentionally, uh, intensity. He's going at the other players like, man, you already know what's up, man. They ain't calling no flags. They up there picking him up and slamming him on the ground. Let this man run mad. They literally have a promo on Madden called Angry, Angry Runs because you're supposed to run mad. They, when, I was a, when I was a kid playing... Uh, football, they was like, man, get mad at it. You know what I'm saying? Go in there. You know, that that's literally what coaches say. Why the heck would you take a man out that's full of energy, full of that burst, full of all of it, ready to just smash mouth these dudes? And I believe CP, the last time we beat the Saints, CP was one of the, like, the main reasons why we won that game in the first place. So anyway, they should have ran the ball. Cal, uh, not Kyle Pitts. Desmond Murder should have never threw that first pick to Honey Badger um, in the first place. CP should have ran it in. That whole play call was just stupid. It was dumb. It, it was uncalled for. And it, it was just stupid. So I, I got to say that real quick. So on offense, but one person I had to talk about right now. And guys, y'all know how I am. It's called tough love. But I don't even think this is tough love because there's nothing I love about this man. I have no attachment to him at all. Uh, Van Jefferson got to go, bro. And I believe Desmond Ritter's second pick wasn't on Ritter's fault. It was Van Jefferson. For anybody that knows sports or football, why the freak, if the ball is coming to you, what the freak are you backing up for? You're supposed to go up to the ball and catch it. This man, Honey Badger, is lurking. Everybody knows about Honey Badger. Honey Badger, the, you know, he went to LSU, you know, Louisiana, all of that stuff. He's like basically New Orleans, you know what I'm saying? He, he's that guy. And obviously, he, he's he, he Once he goes, he never stops. You know what I'm saying? I've been having to play against the dude in Madden for years. I've been having to hear his name. I know what this man is capable of. Cunny Badger is that dude. He used to play corner. Then he moved to safety. But it's like he was playing corner this game and safety. I don't know what the heck was going on. Van Jefferson like a bozo. Desmond, even though he probably could have put some more on it. This man Jefferson was right here. All right? Honey Badger is right here. The ball 
is being thrown. This man is backing up while Honey Badger is moving forward so the ball can get picked off. Like this man, yo, this man is 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 trash, bro. Man Jefferson is literally the worst player on our team. And the biggest mistake, even though I don't like Mike Hughes and all that other stuff, Van Jefferson is the worst wide receiver we've had in the history of the Atlanta Falcons, man. And I know that's that's huge. And I wish the man success. You know what I'm saying? I don't like doing that to people. But this dude is the worst signing or worst trade in the history of the Falcons, man. I'm telling you this right now. This dude is trash. And, um... I told you, Calais Campbell and proved me wrong. He had been coming out ever since he got his 100% sack. He's playing great. I don't have nothing against Calais Campbell. It was that tough love. He learned from it. He's doing stuff for the community. doing stuff for the city. He's actually utilizing stuff on the team. He got hurt this game. And he went out there. Calais Campbell, me and you, cool, bro. We, we good, man. But this man, Jefferson, this man hasn't did anything on the team. When we had to come back in the games, he done dropped it when it was right in his hands. Every single time the game was on the line. Van Jefferson has been messing it up for us. And this dude is terrible. So that's all I got to say for the negative stuff in this game. Get Van Jefferson to freak up out of here, man. That dude is absolutely trash. Hopefully he can sign to somebody practice squad. I don't want nobody to be out of a job. But this man should not be on our team at all. Van Jefferson has to go immediately. Put Scotty Miller over there. Don't put this man, man Jefferson in the game. Keith Smith, our fullback, is freaking being a better receiver than this man. Do not put this man in the game no more. Just let him sit out. Put him on the trade block, even though the trade deadline is gone. This man should never touch a, 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 a... He should never play another snap for the Falcons ever again. Just being real with you. Y'all know how I am. I love to give people chances. This man should never be... This man should get released. But he should find... Like like I said, I don't want somebody out of the job. But he should find somewhere else, bro. Let him be the, the Saints dead way. You know what I'm saying? Let him, let him go to the Saints and drop some passes for them. So... That's what I say. They're not even utilizing. Maybe it's not even him. They're not utilizing his to his talent. He's a deep threat. Stop throwing these slant routes. Stop throwing these comeback routes. Throw the ball deep down the field to him. That's what he's known for. All that comeback, in route, out route. The dude sucks at that. Throw the ball deep, man. That's all I gotta say. If you're gonna if you gonna keep him, utilize him to his talent. Sorry, I had to you know. Ugh. Anyway, on the defense, that's that's the offense. B. John Robinson pretty much was you know carrying the load for us on the offense. And stuff like that. Anyway, on the defense, shout out to Jesse Bates, man. Jesse Bates, the dude that I was so excited about when we signed him, I knew he was going to be great for us. I freaking knew it. Like, I just knew Jesse Bates was that guy. And I'm so happy. He has four picks in the NFL right now as far as, like, this season. I think they say he was tied for third. And if I'm just, this all memory from just the game, he's tied for third. This game, he actually had a forced fumble this game. A pick six, seven tackles, five assisted. This man is literally the player of the game. Besides Bijan on defense and Jesse Bates. I haven't seen a pick six like in our stadium in a long time, it feels like. I think the last one was, I don't even know if that man is still on the team. Um, Marlon Davidson, I don't even know if this man on the team would be injured or they cut him. I don't know what's going on. But I remember it was against Tom Brady last year. Was it last year? Did we play Tom Brady last year? This murder was a rookie last year, right? Yeah. I think that was the last time we got a pick six in that stadium. So, shout out to Marlon Davidson or something like that. So, anyway, um, that pick six was beautiful. Seeing seeing how this man almost broke his arm, all broke his neck, and was still able to have that agility to keep going, that man, man that got me hyped. Bro. I was so happy. I'm like, yo, let's go a pick six. We never freaking see those in our stadium. Besides, like, when Asante Samuel was on the team, Robert Alford, um, who else? We don't really get a lot. I think, like, Willis Moon, guys like that. Like, it was a whole bunch of linebackers that usually do it. Um, so, it, it was cool, man. So, shout out to Jesse Bates, man. I'm so glad this man is on our team. I'm so glad that he embraces the city well. And that's a little history between the Saints and the Bengals because, you know, the Saints say who that. The Bengals say who they, and they all, the Bengals always say the Saints th- took that from them. And, you know, so they never really liked each other to begin with. And the fact that he got that pick six off that, it was just so amazing, man. I love that. There's so much I can say about this game. It was, it was a great experience. It was one of the better games in the new stadium. I told you, I'm glad this season, it feels like an actual stadium where you're watching a game instead of people just looking at it as like a, 
like a, a distraction. The stadium is no longer no longer a distraction. People are actually there to watch the game, and I love that. Um, so anyway, Jeff Okuda, he got beat a couple of times, but you know he 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 is what he is. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's okay. Helms, that was a dude that we got after we. I don't know if we traded away or released Jalen Hawkins. I still would have kept Jalen Hawkins, but it is what it is. The offer, like I said, he had some you know hiccups. He got mossed by. Taysom Hill, but he had made a nice play before that. Caden Ellis made a great play, man. Caden Ellis is, is so good, man. I, he's literally one of my favorite players on the team right now. Four tackles, two assisted. Nate Lamont had made a great play as well this game. Nice hit, and Richie Grant, you know, David Ayamada, I told you, before he plays, Campbell started actually playing. David Ayamada has been consistent. I think they say he leaves. I don't the team if I go for losses or has hits or something like that. So good stuff to him, man. Um Street he he only made one tackle. Arnold Evicetti, he had a sack this game. And it, it was cool, man. This game was really nice. All I gotta say it was it was great. And I believe they said the series was actually tied. I know for a while we was leading about like six or seven games, but over the years we've been losing against the Saints. And now the series it was fifty four to fifty four if I'm not mistaken or forty five, forty five. I believe it was fifty four to fifty four. And this was the tiebreaker. So now the Falcons lead the series 55-54. to 54, And now the Falcons are winning the division right now against them Aints. And it would just feel good out of everything with the city they putting on. I'm glad they didn't ruin it with everything that was going on. You know, with the whole picture I showed y'all and all the ATL freaking rappers and everything, the performances. We had like probably 10 different performances in this one game alone. And the fact that it actually showed up. It would be nice if they would show up for the truth sometimes. You know what I'm saying? Or most of the time. But we always lose those games. Like the better than day games and all this other stuff. We'll never do that. But I guess they finally put on for the city. You know what I'm saying? Pun intended. Because John Jeezy and everybody else was there. So at least do it for the day. Like do it for your home. Like Drew Brees you say for your team, for your city, for your home. This is exactly what the Falcons did this game. And it felt so good, man. It, this felt great. But I told you for some reason it seems like. Everybody, right after they leave the stadium, the excitement kind of leaves them. And, like, the train was quiet. Nobody said anything. And it was crazy. The only thing when I had was the restroom after the game was over, the Saints fans, you know, they was mad. And the only thing they was saying was, oh, 28-3, we got a Super Bowl ring. And I'm like, here we go with this, bro. Here we go. The 28-3, they didn't have nothing to do with that, bro. They wasn't even playing that game. They was at home while we was playing that game. I understand it's a thing for all of us, but it's a long time ago. Their Super Bowl win was longer than that. You know what I'm saying? And we all know why we got that Super Bowl, why they got the Super Bowl ring in the first place. We all know. Everybody knows that we're not we're not stupid. You know what I'm saying? We was their first game when they opened up that new Superdome. You know, after the the whole hurricane in the first place, and then later on, they end up going to the next Super Bowl and winning it after they hold Bounty Gate after they try to kill Brett Favre. So hey man, it's, it's it's a whole bunch of stuff going on with that man. I don't even have to get into that. Y'all know that Super Bowl was bull crap. They gave it to y'all. I'm not trying to hear none of that. What happened today? The Falcons came out and they played and they won the dang game. We got the dang job done on some Armstrongs type stuff, man. Let's go. So, anyway, Desmond Ritter is that dude. I'm, I'm, he got to get better. The turnovers, he got to get better turnovers. They scared me when they tried to run that ball at the end of the game. I was like, yo, the dude leads the league in the turnovers. Why the heck would you give him the ball and when the game's on the line? I know he's clutch. I told you. This man is really clutch. He only messed up one time. It was that with that Van Jefferson dude. If he, if, you know what I'm saying, he failed. So, but uh, I appreciate y'all, man. This is good. This is good. So, I'm glad we won this game. I'm glad we up in the series. Um, and I'm glad to see all those performances. Like I said, Bone Crusher had the, the best performance. It was good to see all the rappers and all of everything. It was good to see. It was good to see everything. It was a rainy, gloomy day. My type of favorite days. Um, underrated type of days. Um, it was good to see my family. Saying shout out to my dad. My sister, you know what I'm saying? Shout out to my Uncle Pete that was out there uh, from Rapper Stadium. Like I said, if you know, you know. If you know his first name, his real name, then you know. Um, it, it was it was great. It was great. It was a great day for the city. It's about dang time. Number one, um, we got to just keep this up. I'm about to see what we play next week. What the heck is going on? Y'all know after the thing, I'll let you know how I feel about everything. Falcons versus versus. Dang, what the heck? Okay, Falcons versus Jets at Jets. 
Now, real quick, I'm not going to go too much on it. It is away in New York. I have a feeling, even though they're talking about Tim Boyle or something like that, Aaron Rodgers may play in this game. I have a feeling, I don't know what it is, but I have a feeling Aaron Rodgers may play. He may do something. I don't know what he's going to do, but I feel like we always end up with those type of games where I feel like oh, the Gizzard Saints always oh, was their first game after the Katrina. Oh, you know what I'm saying? This year, Pat Tillman was a tribute. You know what I'm saying? The scorer ended up equaling the 48. He would have been 48 years old next year. And all that. You know what I'm saying? It's a whole bunch of stuff. Every time there's something going on, whereas we played against the the Jaguars, and it was their anniversary because they always played there. It, it was a whole bunch of stuff already going on. We always get those type of games. Calvin Johnson, when he broke his receiving record, it was against us. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's always against us. So, maybe against the Jets, freaking, he comes back and it's like, oh, Aaron Rodgers, he's taking the team to the playoffs, and next thing you know, they play the freaking 49ers in the Super Bowl like the dude in the hard knocks predicted. Some, some, it's something stupid like that, but if not, if he doesn't play, we should be able to win this game or something like that. We should be all right. So, anyway, appreciate y'all. This is one of my favorite videos that I've made. And, hey, I told you we're going to get better. The team is going to get better. And I appreciate y'all for rocking with me. I checked my analytics. They said India is like the second most uh, viewed country on my content. So, shout out to India. India, you know what I'm saying? We love the Princess Jasmine's over there. You know what I'm saying? We love everybody. We love all of that. Miss uh, Miss Marvel is one of my favorite characters in the Marvel Universe, man. We, we, we love all that, man. So, anyway... See y'all, man. We love, obviously, the United States of America. So, we here in, the, in Atlanta right now. So, I'm just ready. I'm excited. We're going we gonna to keep going. We're going to keep moving. And we number one. Let's go.